Can you really get free web hosting that actually works? Web hosting is almost always a paid product if you want to start a WordPress site or develop with HTML. And if you aren't paying for it, it's usually some free version of a website builder where your site is plastered with ads or stuck on some cheesy subdomain. So I wanted to test the top actually free web hosts to see if any of them were worth using. I started my quest for free hosting at 000 web host. They were starting in 2007 and I actually used them back in the day when I needed some free hosting. They're owned by Hostinger and their product serves as a gateway to eventually get you to upgrade to a premium plan. This strategy is very clear with the unrealistically low limits at 000 web host. You're limited to 300 megabytes of storage and 3 gigabytes of bandwidth. I will give it to Hostinger, their panel and setup process are extremely easy to use. Triple zero web host is optimized for WordPress, but you can use it for anything. If you do decide to use WordPress, they have a setup wizard that pre-installs WordPress with a few recommended plugins. You'll also get limited access to Hostinger's H panel, which is way easier to use than cPanel. cPanel is common among cheap shared hosting, and it's what you'll find at almost every free web host, except triple zero web host. My test WordPress site was impressively speedy considering this is free hosting. You can even connect a custom domain, but you are going to have this ad in the bottom right corner that says powered by triple zero web host. Also, the limits on your account are pretty crippling. After a clean install of WordPress, I was already using 133 megabytes of the 300 megabytes of storage. That storage is going to fill up fast. You're also limited to 10,000 inodes. That's the total number of files and folders that can be on your hosting account. This sounds like a massive number, but actually, after a clean install of WordPress, I was already using 63% of allocated inodes on my account. And the 3 gigabytes of bandwidth can be quite limiting too. For context, my Krayler.media website used 4.3 gigabytes of bandwidth in the last 30 days and that's a fairly simple website. Triple Zero Web Host is basically a free trial for Hostinger. You're gonna hit the account limits quickly and then your options will be to either upgrade to Hostinger or transfer to another free web host. This is a shame because the management panel is a great experience compared to other options like Tinkerhost. Tinkerhost was started as a passion project by some developers who wanted a better way to test their code without having to pay for a monthly hosting account just to do so. The free plan has some impressive specs. Five gig gigabytes of storage, 30,000 inodes, and 100 gigabytes of bandwidth. These specs are actually very usable for a low traffic personal site like a blog, and they're also more than enough for testing larger projects. Tinkerhost does not place any ads or banners on your website, but they may show ads in your client portal to help offset costs. They also make money if you decide to upgrade to their recommended premium hosting, which is powered by their partner company, iFastNet. The Tinkerhost panel is pretty clunky. There's a lot going on with the UI, and it really makes me appreciate the panel at triple zero web host that much much more. There's no easy setup process for WordPress. Instead, you have to go to cPanel and use Softaculous to install WordPress. This is fine if you have a background in cPanel and understand how it works, but since a lot of people who need free web hosting are going to be beginners, I wish there was a simple setup wizard like you'll find at triple zero web host or other premium web hosts. Tinkerhost does offer a free website builder, though I didn't evaluate it because this video is specifically to evaluate free web hosting. There's a ton of free website builder platforms out there like Google Sites, Card, and Wix that can give you a wonderful experience. But for personal WordPress sites or static sites, Tinkerhost is surprisingly usable. I wish the panel was more intuitive, but you'll be fine as long as you're comfortable navigating cPanel. Tinkerhost does offer a premium version called Tinkerhost Plus, and this unlocks access to customer support and removes ads from the client area. This does not improve the quality of your hosting. It still has the same limitations and speeds, but you can still transfer to premium hosting with their partner iFastNet, and they'll transfer your account files free of charge. Another feature you can access for free is the subscribe button. Hit subscribe and click the bell, that way you won't miss any new videos. Next, I looked at another popular option called free hosting. This one offered the most impressive limits I've seen on any free web hosting. 10 gigabytes of storage, 125,000 inodes, and unlimited bandwidth. I was really excited about free hosting, so I signed up for an account and started playing around with it. Free hosting uses direct admin for their panel. It's similar to cPanel, but I actually think it's a bit cleaner and easier to use. It's not as simple as hosting 
Singer's H panel, but it's definitely a step up from C panel. It still uses Softaculous to install apps, so you'll get that same clunky WordPress install experience that you get at Tinkerhost. Up to this point, I was really enjoying Freehost, but unfortunately, after installing WordPress, I ran into a major limitation. They charge a $30 one-time fee just to enable SSL. This is absolutely ridiculous because I was already using Cloudflare DNS, which provides a free SSL certificate. And you can even see here, the SSL certificate provided by Cloudflare is valid and functioning. Otherwise, it wouldn't have that lock icon in the browser. Freehost is literally putting an artificial lock on SSL just to get more money out of people. I don't think anyone should ever have to pay for an SSL certificate. There's so many ways to get them for free, such as through Cloudflare. And this is the first time I've ever seen a web host put an artificial lock on the ability to use HTTPS. I've not even seen this craziness out of hosts like GoDaddy or Bluehost, which are known for doing shady stuff to sell you things you don't need. Freehost also has some other frustrating limitations, like no free subdomains, so you have to connect a top-level domain to get started with your website. They also charge these ridiculous $20 to $30 one-time fees to unlock access to features like PHP version selector, PHP mail, cron jobs, and SSH access. Due to these unnecessary limitations, I can't recommend free hosting. Even though it has impressively high account limits, if you're looking for a truly free website, web hosting, I think you'd be better off at Tinkerhost where you don't have to pay just to access simple features. Now, there's a ton of free hosting options out there. If you Google it and look around, you'll probably be surprised at just how many there are. But I wanted to look at the most popular and credible options in my testing. Another popular option is Infinity Free, and as I started testing it, I noticed that it's also powered by iFastNet, the same host that powers Tinkerhost. This got me thinking, is there some sort of pattern? Are these owned by the same company? One of my biggest questions about free web hosting is why? Why would a company offer? What's the catch? When I started looking into iFastNet, it all made sense. I went to their website and I noticed this link in the footer to myownfreehost.net. The site advertises a full service solution to launch your own free web host and earn money through ads in the client portal, as well as affiliate commissions when someone upgrades to premium hosting at iFastNet. If this sounds familiar, this is exactly what I believe Tinkerhost and Infinity Free are using. iFastNet is providing free hosting accounts to all of their customers, and Tinkerhost and Infinity Free both make money off of the ads in the client portal. Plus, they're sending paid business to iFastNet for anyone who upgrades to a premium account. So it looks like iFastNet has an aggressive affiliate strategy of letting anyone start their own free hosting company, while iFastNet provides the hosting in hopes that enough of those customers will convert to premium customers at iFastNet, and then it makes sense for them and it's a profitable business model. This is the exact same model Triple Zero Webhost is using with hosting. Hostinger, except Triple Zero Webhost is owned by Hostinger directly, so they've effectively cut out the middleman. So all free web hosts exist to ultimately sell you premium hosting. And that's the answer to the question, why? These companies are offering a free trial in hopes that you eventually convert to a paid customer at their recommended provider. And that strategy remains true for Oracle Cloud's free tier. This is an enthusiast free hosting option that I wanted to give an honorable mention. Oracle Cloud offers a free VPS with 20 four gigabytes of RAM. This can be used to host a website, but it's definitely for enthusiasts with a background in server administration. You're gonna have to pick an operating system and handle all the system administration by yourself. This is not going to be a fit for most people, but if you're good with servers, it's a great option for free, powerful web hosting. And if you're just looking to tinker with WordPress, you may not need web hosting at all. Solutions like Local WP allow you to run WordPress locally on your computer without the need for a server. This solution is actually extremely fast because you don't have the lag time of waiting for files to download from a server every time you click to a different page. You can even upload cloud backups to Google Drive and Dropbox. Local is owned by WP Engine, so you can deploy your site with one click to WP Engine or Flywheel Hosting. For other hosts, you are going to have to manually upload your files via SFTP, but this is not that difficult as there's an export button that puts all your website files and MySQL database in a compressed zip file. Ultimately, you may outgrow the limitations of free hosting accounts. If you are at a point where it makes sense to upgrade to paid hosting, I've got an entire comparison video of my top web hosts here.